Rasalula Engida, 1827 February 1897, also known by his horse name Abba Nega and by Alula Kubi, was an Ethiopian general and politician from Tigray. He was one of the important leaders of the Ethiopian Empire's forces during the 19th century. Described by Haggai Ehrlich as the greatest leader whom Abyssinia produced since the death of Emperor Tawadros II in 1868, Rasalula was referred to by Europeans as the Garibaldi of Abyssinia. He led many battles for the independence of Ethiopia, including Dogali and Adwa. In service of the Emperor Johannes IV, Rasalullah successfully defeated the Egyptians in Gunday 1875, Gura 1876, Ailat 1887, Senhit 1880, against the Mahdists of Sudan, Kufit 1885, Matema 1889 against Italians, Sahati 1887, Dogali 1887, Amba Alia 1889, Mikkel 1896 and ADWA 1896. In all the above fighting Rasalullah negatively shamed his enemies and made his people proud. When Johannes returned from his unsuccessful campaign in Sati, he invaded and ravaged Gojam for King Tekel Haimanot Tesema's rebellious intentions. <laughs> <laughs> Early years Alula was born in Menor, a village in Tembian, 15 miles south of Abi Adi, the son of Engdara Cube, a farmer of modest origins. Haggai Ehrlich relates a story about Alula's childhood. Well known throughout Tigray, a group of people carrying baskets of bread to a wedding ceremony were stopped by a group of children led by the future Ras, who demanded to know where they were going. To the castle of Ras Alula Wadi Kubi. They mockingly replied, Thereafter, concludes Ehrlich. His friends and the people of Manor nicknamed him Ras Alula. At first, Alula attached himself to the distinguished Ras Araya Dimsu, hereditary chief of Enderta, who was lord of the land his father farmed. Before long, he gained the attention of Ras Araya's successful nephew, Dejazmik Kasa Mercha, the future emperor Johannes IV, who made him his Elfane Kulke, chamberlain and doorkeeper. Ehrlich records an oral tradition that the young Alula distinguished himself by being the one who captured King Tekel Georgius in the battle where Emperor Johannes crushed his opponent, the 11th of July 1871. In spite of his humble background, Alula succeeded in climbing the ladder of the feudal hierarchy. He had three children by his first wife Woizero Betweta. However, in order to enhance his position at the imperial court, he divorced his wife and married Woizero Amlasu Araya, daughter of Rasaraya Dimsu, the powerful and much-respected uncle of Emperor Johannes IV. His second marriage was purely for political reasons, to improve his legitimacy with the local aristocracy, who did not hide their disapproval at seeing the son of a peasant reach this stature. Alula demonstrated his military skill in the Battle of Gunday and Gura, which were fought in November 1875 and March 1876 respectively, where he routed the Egyptian forces. Emperor Johannes badly needed a man with these skills at the moment, for Ras Walter Michael Solomon was in revolt in Hamasian. Alula was promoted to Ras and sent to deal with this unruly aristocrat, who fled to Bogos. On 9 October 1876, the Emperor Johannes IV made Alula governor of Merib Melash and Midri Bari today part of Eritrea. Battle of Kufit In the Hewitt Treaty, concluded in 1884, the United Kingdom recognized Bogos and Masawa as possessions of Ethiopia in return for Ras Alula's help evacuating the Egyptian garrisons of Amadeb, Algadan, Keren, Gira, and Galabat which had been isolated by the Mahdists, and because of these successes the British once more asked for his help against the Mahdists under Osman Digna, Ras Alula prepared for his campaign against the Mahdists, despite the opposition of certain local leaders who did not accept his rule. Nevertheless, Alula advanced into the territory of the Bogos, then entered Karen in September 1885, where he stayed for ten days, then marched on Kufit. At Kufit, Osman Digna's forces were annihilated, but the Ethiopians also suffered significant losses, the commanders Blatter Gebru and Asalafi Hagos were killed, and Ras Alula himself was wounded. <laughs> <laughs> Battle of Dogali However events beyond Tigray or the Horn of Africa gave Ras Alula very little time to recover from the battle. As part the Europeans scramble for Africa, at this time the Italians took control of the Red Sea coasts, occupying Massawa and Sahati with the tacit approval of the British, which was a violation of the Hewitt Treaty. Although he had collaborated with the British against the Mahdists, Ras Alula's chief interest was to guarantee Ethiopian sovereignty, which made him very wary towards the English who he suspected supported the Italians' encroachments. 
His mistrust is clearly expressed in a conversation carried out with Augustus B. Wilde, the former British vice consul at Jeddah, who recorded these words in a dispatch to the Manchester Guardian. What does England mean by destroying Hewitt's treaty and allowing the Italians to take my country from me? Did I not relieve the Egyptian garrison in the Bogos country? Did I not fight at Kassala when it was too late? Have I not done everything I could? You English used us to do what you wanted and then left us. Upon returning to Ismara, Alula mobilized 5,000 men and marched from Ginda towards Sahati. It is unclear whether Ras Alula was acting on his own initiative in this instance, or at the orders of his emperor. Discussing the battle later, he insisted that he was following orders. Contemporary Ethiopian documents support Ras Alula's claim. However, in a 9 March 1887 letter to Queen Victoria, Emperor Johannes wrote that his general had first spent two weeks investigating the Italian presence, then demanded that the Italians either evacuate their positions outside of Massawa or fight. Before attacking the Italians, he notified Emperor Johannes of his intentions, which is expressed to Harrison, who had accompanied the Admiral Hewitt during the negotiations of the treaty, declaring to him that the British had not honoured their word. To Marco Polo Bay Ras Alula wrote that the Italians were in Massawa, and to the consul Suman de France, he warned that he would destroy the Italian forces if they did not leave Abyssinian territory. But the Italians believed that it was, "...the divine will that the Italians come to Massawa." In October 1886, the forces of Alula appeared near Sahati and Massawa. By December 1886, confrontation with the Italians was inevitable. The first clash took place 25 January 1887 at Sahati, where the Ethiopians were repulsed with heavy casualties. Alula rallied his troops and the next day annihilated the Italian relief column at Dogali. The commander of the Italian forces, Colonel Tommaso de Cristoforis, was killed in this battle, along with 400 soldiers and 22 officers. <laughs> <laughs> battle of Galabat By 1888 the Sudanese Italians and dervishes were ready to renew their attacks. In March 1889, the Battle of Galabat, also known as the Battle of Metemma, was fought on the western Ethiopian border. Here the Emperor Johannes was wounded and killed, and his head taken by the Mahdists as a trophy, in spite that the Ethiopians almost carry the day. Emperor Johannes' death led to a period of political turmoil in Ethiopia. Although Johannes on his deathbed had named his son Ras Mengesha as his heir, and begged Ras Alula and his other nobles to support him, within a matter of weeks Menelik II was recognized throughout Ethiopia as the new emperor. Meanwhile, Ras Alula found himself isolated, his patron dead, and the steady Italian advance from the coast having deprived him of his power base beyond the Mareb River. Menelik II of Shewa was crowned emperor only a few months after the battle. The Italian Count Pietro Antonelli, who represented his country in Ethiopia, hastened to Wukala where he negotiated a treaty with Menelik, which gave official Ethiopia recognition to Italian possession of all of the land the Italians occupied. A few months later, they used this treaty to declare Eritrea their African colony. <laughs> <laughs> Battle of ADWA Following the Treaty of Wukala, the Italians continued to extend to the west not only around Tessany and Agordat, but also around ADWA. Unknown to Emperor Menelik, the Italian version of the treaty had language making Ethiopia a protectorate of Italy, and the Italian actions were in preparation for its enforcement on his empire and making it a colony. When Emperor Menelik learned of this treachery, he renounced the treaty which led to the First Italo-Abyssinian War, and as the bitter news spreads through Ethiopia the major nobility and military figures, including Ras Alula, unanimously joined him. The conflict has its climax at the Battle of Adwa on 1 March 1896. In this battle, Alula was on the left side of the Ethiopian positions, on the heights of Ardia Bune, supported by Ras Makonnen, and Ras Mikhail. The forces of Ras Sevat and Dejazmik Hagos Tafari likewise joined Ras Alula and Ras Mengesha. Augustus Wilde, a contemporary of the events, described Ras Alula's invaluable contribution to this critical battle. The Abyssinians never expected to be attacked, and the Italian advance would have been a complete surprise, had it not been for Ras Alula, who never believed the Italian officials, and would never trust them. Two of his spies observed the Italians leave Antitio, and arrived by a circuitous route, and informed Ras Alula, who was one mile to the north of Ardi Abuna, that the enemy was on the march to Adoa. The Ras immediately informed King Menelik and the other leaders, and the Abyssinians prepared for battle, sending out strong scouting parties in all directions in front of their positions towards Antitio. During the battle itself, Ras Alula was assigned to watch the Gasgori Pass and block the arrival of Italian reinforcements coming from Ardi Kuala. Topic. 
death. Rasalullah could not rest after this victory. Less than a year later, on the 15th of January 1897, he fought against an old rival, Ras Hagos of Tembian. Although Rasalullah was victorious and Ras Hagos killed, Rasalullah was wounded by a gunshot wound in the leg and died from his wounds the 15th of February 1897. Topic: <laughs> Legacy. Rasalullah is the best general and strategist that Africa has perhaps produced in modern times. Rasalullah holds a special place in Ethiopian history as the greatest military mind the country has ever produced. The airport in Mekil is named after Rasalullah, and an equestrian statue is dedicated to him in that city. A hotel in Aksum also bears his name. Ethiopian scholar Richard Pankhurst named his son, Drive. Alula Pankhurst, after Rasalullah. <laughs>